Draw the free body diagram for the crate and the pulley and the ball. What other variables are we going to need to define based on the problem that we're given to be able to do equations of equilibrium? So if we start with the crate, the first thing we have is some weight acting down. We can call that WC. So that would be our first variable. If you're not given it in the problem, you have to make up another to call it. Also, we have a tension in the rope. So that would be our second variable, the tension in the rope. Now, this one is actually optional. Many people will not choose to actually draw this free body diagram because it's so simple and will simply use WC as the tension in the rope all the way through the problem. Please note that this one foot measurement on the side does not appear. It's not pertinent. Now when we do the pulley, we will have equal and opposite forces from the tension in the rope before. That's not a new variable. Nor, in fact, is the tension that's coming out on the rope on the other side. We know that it's a frictionless pulley because we haven't done friction in pulleys yet, and we're going to need to have the angle in, the, in between those two ropes. So that's going to be another variable. We also have the reaction forces from whatever's holding the pulley in place. So that pole is holding the pulley from going right and left, and it's holding the pulley from going up and down. So I'm going to have Rx and Ry. Those are your reaction forces from the pole holding the pulley in place. Now, those are two more unknowns. Please note that you could, in fact, have a reaction force going this way and another force going that way. But if you do that, you need to actually specify what angle these are acting at. And I don't really need to have that information. A note about this angle between these ropes. I could also, if I wanted to make use of the three that was given to me in the problem, I could say that this tension was coming off at some sort of um, 3 and x where x is the horizontal distance I'm not given between where this rope acts and this ball lives. Now, having said that, this makes this force specified as a magnitude along a line, which is just fine. It's either or. It doesn't change the number of variables you have, though. In either case, you have one extra variable there. Now, when I move on to the ball, I will have the equal and opposite tension in the rope that's holding it up, and I will have the angle theta that it acts at. That's not a new variable either of them. I will have a reaction from the ground. That is a new variable. I don't know what that is. I also don't know what angle it acts at. So if I define C as the angle between the horizontal and the tangent line along the ground surface, that's what I end up with there. And I will have the weight of the ball, which I also haven't been given. So I have eight variables here. Obviously, from the weight of the crate, when I get to equilibrium, I will have the sum of the forces in the y direction gives me 1 T equals WC. When I get to the pulley and equations of equilibrium, I will have a balancing in the right and left and a balancing in the up and down. That's two more. When I get to the ball, I will have a balancing right and left and balancing up and down. That's two more. I have five total equations here. That means I'm going to need to give you three more bits of information for you to solve. Now, it's worth your becoming aware of how these problems come together in that I can give you any three pieces of information. You might consider that I might give you X WC and WB, and how would you then go through and find all of the other bits of information? What the reaction of the ground is, what the reaction of the pulleys are, that kind of thing. A lot of different choices here.